Algae is natural. It's been around since the beginning of time, but all of a sudden, between one day and the next, there's an environmental trigger that will turn an algal bloom toxic. We really don't know what it is, but almost certainly climate change is part of that. The problem has gotten so much worse as our climate has warmed. We have had beach closures here in Arizona because of toxic algal blooms. It is a huge environmental problem that has hit every single state. Three dogs in North Carolina died last week after swimming in a pond. This Australian shepherd named Fina died less than an hour after ingesting toxic algae in the Guadalupe River outside Austin. If I'd known that being anywhere near that water would have killed my dog, I would not have taken her on that trail. From just looking at it, you can't tell whether it's toxic or not. What if we actually had a way to predict when these algal blooms are going to occur? The municipalities need this information desperately because they don't have sufficient funding to go out and test every lake and every river every day. Most of the stories that we see are from Florida. Here's another one from, from earlier this year. There he is. Hi, Rob. It's so good to see you. It's hard to believe it's actually been over a year. Uh, Rob graduated last spring, and he decided that he wanted to go to Florida. That's a state that is dealing with severe toxic algal blooms. When I moved here last summer, um, it was in the news just about every day, just how bad these blooms were. Right. Something that really motivated me to pursue graduate school. This has definitely been a pivotal point in my life. There's a lot of research to try to Ready? investigate why is it that these blooms will go toxic. Nice day today, beautiful. This is the site of our research, the Sweetwater Wetlands. It's really a tremendous site here in Tucson. Every day, Highly treated recycled water goes into this wetland and creates a haven for wildlife. Is that duckweed or is that algae? The green in the water isn't just algae. The other thing in there is duckweed. It's almost like a lawn on top of the pond. The birds love it here. Plenty of algae and duckweed to pick out there and extract the DNA. When Rob did his studies, he was out here every month collecting water samples. And we'll just secure this bottle and get the job done. <laughs> Sampling out here is a lot of fun. I can utilize my interest and curiosity in water science and these algal blooms and be able to contribute. Or we use the water quality of recycled water to understand how that might influence toxin production. So what I'm doing is measuring the conductivity of this water. We were able to compare that to a pond that contains no treated wastewater. So water looks pretty clear. Lots of little critters swimming around in there. And ultimately we found that there's something about recycled water that is inhibiting this toxin production. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was great to see you. Uh, I miss spending time there at the lab. And... Yeah. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks, Rob. Bye. Bye. Oh. Yep. So, I miss Rob. <laughs> We really are trying to unravel parts of the puzzle. We've identified something that is preventing the toxic algal blooms from occurring, and the next step is to find out what is that something. This is not just a human problem, it's not just a domestic pet's problem, but it affects anything that gets near that water. And so it's very important to make sure that our water is completely safe. A warning from the state's Department of Environmental Conservation. up on thousands of miles of beach on Florida's tied to climate change. A dolphin has died, 80 manatees have died. Uh, this is a disaster.
toxic algal blooms, they've been all over the news lately. We've been working on this in small pieces for about nine years now. So it is very exciting that we found something. We just don't know what we found yet. We won't know until we do much more focused research.